Now let's move on to the uh, heart of the symposium and let me introduce the first speaker, uh, Dr. Raja uh, Sivarmani from University of California, Davis, who's gonna speak on the influence of tretinoin and isotretinoin on the sebaceous gland, uh, lipid dome, and lipid mediators. Raja? Thank you very much. Uh, it's, a, it's an honor to be here and speak to you all about some of the research that we've been working on. So I'm at UC Davis, and um, these are my disclosures. So we know that acne is, uh, has profound psychological impact, and um, one of the motivations for a lot of the work that we're doing is that the antibiotics are used so frequently as first-line therapies. And what we'd like to do is get a better understanding of what are the lipids that are involved and how are the lipids being modulated um, with the hope that in the future, can we look at that as a, a future therapeutic target? And so, uh, as many of you know, sebum is lipid rich, um, secreted by the sebaceous glands. And as it gets secreted onto the skin surface, there's obviously other players involved, cellular debris, as well as the microbiome is gonna add some lipids to the uh, lipid milieu as well. And so one of, the, one of the goals that we wanted to look at was understand how do retinoids truly work? We know that they're effective, um, and we know that isotretinoin is probably the most profound um, medication for acne, uh, especially in its uh, ability to reduce sebum. Uh, interestingly, tretinoin, if you look at a lot of the studies, when you just look at sebum production, uh, you don't see an overall sebum production reduction. You do see acne improve, but you don't see uh, modulation of uh, the overall sebum, especially when they use things like the sebimeter and whatnot. But um, there, are, there are previous work that suggested that lipid profiles, rather than overall lipids, if you look at the profiles, the profiles can change. I uh, reference um, one article here by Dowling and Strauss, where they uh, looked at linoleic, linoleic acid, and, and they saw that it increased when people were on isotretinoin. So what we wanted to know is what is the role of the, the retinoids in modulating um, the lipid profile. So our hypothesis was that isotretinoin and tretinoin will decrease the human sebocyte-specific saponeic acid lipid derivatives in the sebum. And so what we wanted to do here was take a much more specific look at sebaceous lipids rather than doing an overall profiling. And to do this, uh, what we did was uh, we conducted a study where we collected SIBA tapes and uh, we had uh, people that had mild to moderate acne go on to topical tretinoin, those that had moderate to severe, and they were mostly in the high moderate category, um, systemic isotretinoin, and then we had age and sex matched controls. And what we did was we collected sebum at various time points, so at baseline and then at one month, and then with the isotretinoin, we carried it out so that their cumulative dose was to um, what you'd normally carry it out to when you're gonna finish treatment. So we carried out to uh, four to five months, but most of them were at five months. We were aiming for a cumulative dose rather than a, a month uh, target. So uh, for starters, this we're all familiar with, but we also uh, reproduced the, the, the same sort of data, which was that as you, um, as you look at uh, mild and moderate acne, you do see uh, more lipid production and more squalene being produced. Uh, this is more of a general kind of an approach, uh, and we worked with, um, we worked with uh, basically we did it through um, mass spec to quantify, and then when we looked at the specific saponeic targets, we, we also uh, saw the same sort of a pattern. Um, all of the derivatives, except um, the fatty acid derivative, all of the derivatives, did, we did see the stepwise increase as you went from controlled to mild to moderate acne. Um, and of course, this is just reproducing what people have done before, which is to show that just measuring overall sebum uh, you, don't, you don't capture differences uh, in, in, in the tretinoin group. As you can see, we didn't see much difference here. Isotretinoin group, that group tended to have um, worse acne, but you see a, a, a profound drop by the time they come back for their um, first month visit. What we wanted to do was we wanted to understand how does it work when you actually look at the specific um, sebum-specific targets. So in this case, saponeic acid derivatives. Uh, you can see here isotretinoin, 
um, across the board uh, decreased everything, which is um, what we would have expected. Interestingly, when you look at tretinoin, um, and here we're measuring it, we're just showing it as relative to their baseline, we are able to capture that tretinoin uh, does have about a 13% decrease. Now, what, I, what I'm not showing here is that we've actually reproduced some of this da data with de novo lipogenesis, where we've given people tracers, and we've also seen that tretinoin does uh, reduce uh, the lipid production by about 13%, even in that scenario. It's going to show that CBU meter measurements may not be the best way to really track what, how you're um, addressing the sebaceous gland, and that there are much more specific targets available to us now. Secondly, we were a little surprised to see that some of the um, lipids uh, increased relatively. We were expecting all the lipids to decrease across the board. Um, however, we did see that linoleic acid um, did increase, and this goes back to Strauss's paper. He noticed that uh, linoleic acid, linoleic, had increased. What we saw was with a higher cumulative dosing, you do see a, a higher relative amount um, of linoleic acid fold change from baseline. And these are normalized baselines. And then stearic acid as well. We saw stearic acid increase. Um, we're not sure exactly what the reason is for the stearic acid increase, but we've seen this reproducibly. Um, and we do see a dose response as well with, uh, with the isotretinoin exposure. All of these are significant. I didn't put asterisks on here because when we did the analysis, um, all, I'm reporting all the significant uh, fold changes. And so not only did we see it for the free fatty acids, but we saw for isotretinoin um, that the derivatives, the stearic acid derivatives, were also increasing with treatment um, rather than uh, decreasing. And so um, that was all the clinical studies. And then we wanted to start delving into some of the, uh, the lipid mediators. And so we have the ability to look at lipid mediators much more closely. Um, in terms of not just free fatty acids, but one of the important targets that we want to look at are eicosanoids, um, leukotrienes, and uh, prostaglandins would be included in that, as well as endocannabinoids. What we wanted to understand was do, when you put, when you expose, get exposed to isotretinoin, do you change any of those lipids? This is done in SEB1 cells. Um, we're going to be following this up with uh, clinical samples. But SEB1 cells are a cell line, so we realize that that's not a primary human, uh, a primary human sebocytes. However, um, what we did find is that as you expose um, the, uh, I, the cells to isotretinoin, you see an increase in the 5 lox enzyme. What, one, of the, one of the challenges has always been to understand why do people flare when you start them on isotretinoin. And um, so we think this may be the first step to a better understanding, maybe these lipid profiles are actually being altered in a way that might uh, support a bit more inflammation. We're going to be following this up with clinical samples. But what I do want to point out is that we're able to actually profile quite a lot of the lipids um, across the board and not just, uh, not just free fatty acids. So uh, in this case here, we took sebocytes before and after they were exposed to TNF, which would be the inflammatory milieu that might mimic um, an acne lesion. And you can see um, there's actually quite a lot of uh, different prostaglandins that are upregulated, a few leukotrienes that are upregulated. And um, what's important to also realize is these ceramides that are upregulated, um, these are lower branch ceramides, and they tend to go up when their barrier isn't working as well. The, the barrier is supported by ceramides that are way out in, in, um, in a longer chain. But these ceramides, um, go up in atopic dermatitis, and we also see some of these ceramides going up here. Um, this is only in cell culture. We haven't reproduced this in uh, looking at uh, clinical samples, so I don't want to make too much of this, but we just make this as an as a interesting note. But really, the point is that um, the lipid mediators do change uh, in an inflammatory milieu, and it's much beyond just free fatty acids. So putting that all together, uh, topical tretinoin does alter the sebum profile, even though it didn't alter the overall sebum uh, production. And so uh, what we, so it decreased sapienic acid levels and then increased the relative proportion of linoleic acid and steric acid. But the point being, as we move forward um, with, with research, we, we believe that using these tools will be much more, uh, much more accurate and might give us much more clues on other agents that we might want to start thinking about um, evaluating. And then isotretinoin, 
We saw that it decreased the sapienic acid derivatives. Um, we saw also that this linoleic acid and steric acid um, increase was involved. One of the things that we've been interested in is wondering how is this helping the, uh, the clinical profile of acne? Could this be involved? We know linoleic acid has an anti-inflammatory effect. We've been wondering about steric acid as well. So one of the things that we would like to, that we're looking at is looking at how different players in the lipid, lipidome affect um, microbiological growth. And so poster 694, if you want to make your way over to there, we've, we've started looking at uh, these different lipids that are being produced and understanding how do they affect um, the different microbiological uh, organisms that might be present, such as P. acnes and Staph epidermidis. And the other thing that I, we, I wanted to point out that we feel is important is that we feel that the eicosanide lipid mediators should be studied in a little bit more detail since they directly contribute to inflammation. And I think that that will also give us much more of a, a robust profile of what's going on in sebum. And with that, I would like to acknowledge the AARS for their support. Uh, they helped me uh, connect with uh, Dr. Thibetot, and she's uh, really provided quite a lot of mentorship in thinking through how do you work with sebocytes and how do you set up the clinical, uh, the clinical scenarios. Also, um, I'd like to thank our Nagar. She's actually done quite a lot of the work in terms of collecting the samples. And then the folks at Lipidom Lipidomics with Metabolon, they, um, we worked closely with them to really refine how they're looking at the targets that we wanted to look at. And then uh, my mentor at my institution, Dr. Isroff, she's been wonderful in supporting a lot of my research endeavors. And with that, I thank you and open it up to any questions. We have time for questions. If you have questions, please come up to the mic. Raj, I have a question. So um, once you get to the clinical scenario of initiation of isotretinoin, for instance, there's, there, what do you think about the differences in terms of time course at the initiation of isotretinoin as compared to much later on? Because the aspects of what happens to the sebaceous glands are really, you know, they're in a different state. And then also, what's your sense of inflammation and how that may play into the change in expression? Yeah, so uh, you're referring to isotretinoin starting it earlier in the course versus later in the course. Uh, I think that's a really um, a good question. Our sense is, I don't think we quite know enough about how these profiles are changing. So we don't know if someone's already got an inflammatory setup. Are they more of a setup to then inflame even more? I think clinically we know that that tends to happen if you start someone that's worsened. You know, do they, do they then worsen even more? I think one thing, though, that um, we're hoping that we might be able to identify is, I know a lot of us might start steroids at the same time, but instead of steroids, is it possible that we might be able to start more specific inhibitors if you think that there's someone that's going to inflame more um, earlier? So, so Raja, I, I have a thought as to why your uh, linoleic, linoleic acid and steric acid production is going up. because. Uh, I think w what may be happening is that you're uh, switching the um, conversion of natural retinoid into the, uh, you're basically activating the esterification pathway. So years ago, we, we published on the metabolism of retinoids in human skin. So w when you soak the skin with uh, retinol or retinoic acid, uh, skin cells feel that there's plenty of retinoids. So they, they turn on the uh, storage form. And what you find is a huge buildup of uh, linoleic, retinol uh, linoleate and retinol sterate. So as you're depleting those fatty acids, uh, the cells are probably switching on to make more of the fatty acids. So it might be interesting to look at the metabolic profile uh, as you try to dissect that what's going on. Yeah, no, I think it's a very, it's a very good point. This actually, we, um, thank you for bringing that up because it's a discussion that we had as well, was that what are the metabolic pathways that are being activated? Is there some switching going on? Um, and the, actually, that is the, the next step that we're looking because we want to understand why this is happening. It's because um, then that might give us a clue as to how we could maybe directly go after those pathways.
Come up to the microphone, introduce yourself. And if you have conflicts of interest, you might as well declare them. If you could with this, I don't know. <laughs> I'm wondering, Raja, if the cepionic acid, is it known to be an activator of any of the receptors in the skin, like a PPAR uh, one or two, uh, PPAR gamma or? You mean a direct activator? Direct activator. I'm not, uh, I, and someone may know better than me, but I'm not aware of it, activating the PPAR gamma directly. Um, yeah, and you know, it's not even the rate limiting step. Uh, it's usually palmitate that's okay. rate limiting okay. the skin. Or any other uh, orphan receptors or, you know, I mean, I'm just. Wondering. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, there are a, f there are a few, um, th so there are a few that can affect, uh, you mean like surface receptors? Um, there are a few that can affect surface receptors, but you know, they're along, um, you know, the eicosanoids are the ones that I'm more familiar with. Um, some of the long chain fatty acids, like saturated long chain fatty acids, they do activate TLR2 um, on the surface of, uh, of sebocytes. They've actually done some studies and we've done some studies to look at that as well. So, th so the toll-like receptor is one. Um, I'm sure there's other ones, but that's one that, you know, is a clear connection to inflammation. Thank you. Thank you.